Today we're going to look at a pretty cool integral that will use a result that we've proved on the channel before. Actually it's a result related to number theory or at least a special number theory function but we're going to save that until we get to it. Okay we want to evaluate the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of 1 plus x over 2 to the x over x ln x. Okay so the first thing that we're going to use is some standard logarithm identities to simplify that numerator. So let's get to that. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to 1. And now I can write this as the natural log of 1 plus x. And then minus the natural log of 2 to the x. But I can write that as x times the natural log of 2 using the exponential rule for logarithms. And then this is all over x natural log of x dx. Okay, so now we've got that. Now the next thing that I'd like to do is observe that I can take this x in the denominator and cancel it with the 1 in the numerator as long as I put a 1 over x right there. And so that's exactly what I'm going to do. And now what I'll do is I'll use the power series expansion for the natural log of 1 plus x to simplify this a little bit. So I just thought I'd like to recall that really quickly. So we have the natural log of 1 plus x is going to be equal to the sum as n goes from 1 up to infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n times x to the n. Now let's observe that that will converge when x is equal to 1 by the alternating series test. But that means that we'll have natural log of 1 plus 1. In other words, natural log of 2 is equal to the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n. And so now what we'll do is replace this natural log of 1 plus x and this natural log of 2 with those sums. But then I can bring the sum out of each of them. And then let's also observe that this 1 over x will knock this down to n minus 1. And we can see that maybe immediately by let's put a 1 over x here. And then this will turn to n minus 1. Okay, so let's see. That's going to leave us with the sum as n goes from 1 up to infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n. And so that's from each of these terms. Notice these terms each have that kind of thing in them. And then we'll have the integral from 0 up to 1 of x to the n minus 1 minus 1 over the natural log of x dx. So we're left with something like that. And now we're going to use one of my favorite tricks, which is to transport a single integral into a double integral. And so anytime you see something like this, you've got a base. So here our base is x, and we've got a natural log of x in the denominator. That looks like I took the derivative of some sort of exponential function. Let's maybe recall that over here that if we take the derivative, and I'm going to use maybe t as the variable at the moment, the derivative with respect to t of a to the t, we get the natural log of a, and then times a to the t. Okay, nice. So I guess seeing that natural log of x in the denominator really means that it looks like an antiderivative has been taken. But anyway, what I can do is I can take the derivative of this, and then evaluate it inside of an integral, essentially using the fundamental theorem of calculus to transport this single integral to a double integral. So let's see, I'll have the sum as n goes from 1 up to infinity. I still have this minus 1 to the n plus 1 and then this n here. And then I have the integral from 0 to 1. And then after that I have the integral from 0 to n minus 1 of x to the y power and then dy dx. And that's because what I have done is I've taken this thing right here and I've rewritten it as this integral. So observe if I take the antiderivative here, I'll get x to the y over the natural log of x. 
and then I evaluate that at zero and I get one. Remember, I'm evaluating at y equals zero. And then I evaluate that at n minus one and I get x to the n minus one. So that's what we've done there. Okay, so now what we'll do is use Fubini's theorem to change the order of integration. So I still have my sum. So n is going from one to infinity. I still have this minus one to the n plus one over n. And now I'll have the integral from zero to n minus one, and then the integral from zero to one of x to the y dx dy. But now let's look at that inner sum, and we'll observe that that inner sum is really nice. Sorry, I should say inner integral here. And that's because my variable of integration is the base. And so that means that I can simply use the power rule, increase the exponent by one and divide by the new exponent. So let's see, we'll have the sum, n goes from one to infinity, minus one to the n plus one over n, integral zero to n minus one. So let's maybe do this over on the side so we don't take up so much room, so we can maybe fit this all on one board. So taking the antiderivative will give me something like this. I have x to the y plus one over y plus one evaluated from zero to one. So kind of obviously evaluating that at zero will give us zero x, or sorry, zero to the y plus one is zero. And then evaluating that at one will give us one over y plus one. Remember, we're evaluating at x equals zero and x equals one. So in the end, we'll simply have one over y plus one dy. So that's what we're left with right now. Okay, so now what we can do is take the integral of that inside thing, which is really straightforward, just fundamental theorem of calculus. So let's recall that the derivative of the natural log of y plus one with respect to y will be one over y plus one. So this is going to give us, and maybe we'll keep this theme going of doing this little calculation over here, this evaluation calculation. This gives us natural log of y plus one. It's actually absolute value of y plus one, but we're evaluating it at positive numbers, so we don't need the absolute value in there. Evaluated from zero to n minus one. So evaluating at zero, we get natural log of one. Evaluating it at n minus one, we get the natural log of n. So let's observe that this is minus one to the n plus one times the natural log of n over n. But now here's where our special number theory function comes in. And I'm gonna maybe put that right here. So let's recall the following. And that is the existence of this thing called the Dirichlet eta function. So it's eta of s, and that's equal to minus, or sorry, the sum is n goes from one to infinity of minus one to the n plus one over n to the s. So now what if we took the derivative of that? Well, notice that since the variable here is really s, we would take the derivative with respect to s, which would involve using one of those exponential rules. And maybe I'll leave it to you. You can use the chain rule a little bit or whatever, and you'll see that the derivative of this with respect to s will be this sum as n goes from one to infinity of minus one to the n plus one times the natural log of n over n to the s. So again, like I said, that's a fairly straightforward calculation. You just do it term by term. Okay, so there, we've recalled that Dirichlet eta function. And now let's observe that we have that exactly for s equals one. So this is in fact the derivative of that Dirichlet eta function evaluated at one. But now there's a previous video I did and it's called how to take the derivative of an important number theory function. So you can check that out if you'd like to, where we calculate exactly this derivative of the Dirichlet eta function and we get the following value. So this is gamma times the natural log of two minus half natural log of two squared, where gamma is the Euler-Mascheroni constant, and that's a good place to stop.